India's mission to become net zero by 2070 is poised to lead the nation on a path to clean, green and sustainable economic development. Guided by the government's vision to make India energy independent, News 18 Network has partnered with Tata Power for Sustainable is Attainable, a special initiative that will raise mass awareness to build a sustainable future and initiate conversations involving businesses, governments, the civil society to help India achieve carbon neutrality. Welcome to India Energy Bulletin, a show where we bring you the latest news, policy, developments and technological advancements that are driving India's sustainable growth agenda. So let's talk today about the transport sector, which alone accounts for 18% of India's total energy consumption. The sector is responsible for an estimated 142 million tonnes of CO2 emissions annually, out of which 123 million tonnes are contributed by the road transport segment alone. So what's the solution? Two words, electric vehicles. The Council on Energy, Environment and Water in its 2020 report has quantified that if EVs could garner a 30% market share of new vehicle sales by 2030, India can increase job creation, improve energy security, reduce greenhouse gas emissions and pollutant emissions as well while reducing travel costs for users. September 9 is World EV Day, a global movement to drive change and to celebrate the transition to sustainable transport choices. Today's episode will focus on ushering in the EV wave and drive conversations to move towards sustainable mobility. The Union Ministry of Power has announced revised consolidated guidelines and standards for charging infrastructure for EVs. This move is expected to enable a faster adoption of electric vehicles in India by ensuring safe, reliable, accessible and affordable charging infrastructure and ecosystem. This is also intended to promote energy security and reduce carbon emission by promoting the entire EV ecosystem. These guidelines include provisions for individual owners of EVs or for public charging stations. Now, the guidelines have been made technology agnostic by providing for not only prevailing international charging standards, but also new Indian charging standards. The guideline states that tariff for supply of electricity to public EV charging stations shall be a single part tariff and not exceed the average cost of supply. This is till 31st March 2025. State governments to fix the ceiling of service charges and any public charging station or chain of charging stations may obtain electricity from any generation company through open access. Bureau of Energy Efficiency is set to create and maintain a national online database of all public charging stations. India's electric mobility story is rapidly evolving and as per a KPMG report, India is set to have 5 crore EVs by 2030. This is expected to bring a huge opportunity for EV charging players. To accelerate adoption of electric vehicles and ease range anxiety, the government is planning to launch a super app. The app to provide location and availability of charging stations. Globally, 4.2 million electric vehicles were sold in the first half of this year, a 63% growth from the same period last year. China alone witnessed the sale of 2.4 million EVs, marking a 26% growth compared to 2021. Now, India needs to set up to 46,000 EV stations by 2030 to match the global benchmark. There is one charger per 135 EVs in India, compared to 6 in China and Netherlands and 19 for the US. And according to a report by ICRA, investment in cell manufacturing is expected to exceed $9 billion, that is around 70,000 crore rupees by 2030 in India. Battery manufacturing segment remains a critical cog in the overall development of the EV ecosystem. And under phase 2 of Fame India scheme, the Government of India has sanctioned 2,877 electric vehicle charging stations in 68 cities across 25 states and union territories. Now, to understand how India is gearing up for faster adoption of electric mobility, rapid development of EV ecosystem and innovative solutions to push for EV, we are now being joined by Sudendu J. Sinha, who is the advisor, Infrastructure, Connectivity and Electric Mobility, Niti Aayog. Mr. Sinha, thank you so much for joining us on the show, sir. Now, let's uh, start by asking because the big push or how India really is pioneering a new model of economic development that could avoid the carbon intensive approaches and provide a blueprint for other developing economies as well. What are your thoughts on this? You know, India has got a phenomenal role because we are aware that internationally, whatever pollution is generated, uh, in a way, we have got some, say, 7% contribution to it. 
is from India. That is itself is, is phenomenal. And that is the reason why we are going full blow, full throttle in trying to kind of create a situation whereby the carbon footprints can be reduced, the sources of energy could be more from the renewables, the energy basket can be diversified, and we are able to, to kind of move towards uh, a very low carbon, uh, carbon print kind of economies. That is what the aspiration is. And you are aware that uh, during COP26, Prime Minister himself said that we are going to be net zero by 2070. Within the country also, different organizations, different uh, uh, transport systems, many of them, they have committed that we will, be, we will be achieving that net zero target much earlier. And very recently on 5th of June, Prime Minister on the Climate Day, he connected, he gave a movement of called LIFE, that is lifestyle for environment. The idea being that, you know, everybody should have a kind of contribution, should have a responsibility, accountability, and contributions to make towards, towards creating that, that sort of uh, envi environmental standards that we want to aspire for. So he is attempting to create a sort of movement. That is precisely, you know, and that is having its reflections in economy. Many of the provisions of budget, they are focusing on, on low carb, carbon uh, the footprint kind of uh, models. A lot of initiatives are definitely going on, ma'am. Well, you know, with the large automotive industry and pollution issues, how is India ripe for innovation and rapid adoption of EVs in times to come? Okay, as far as electric mobility is concerned, let me tell you that uh, we have got a national mission on transformative mobility and battery storage that is housed at Niti Aayog. Now, in addition to that, in 2018 Global Move Summit, Prime Minister laid down that what are the contours, what are the parameters or that future mobility will have, that a clean mobility should have. So, he talked of the connected, the clean, charged cutting edge, common, convenient, seven C's primarily with respect to mobility. So that was his idea that mobility should be very, very, you know, it should be clean. It should be, it should be as if life becomes very easy out there in the urban as well as rural areas. That has been there. In the electric mobility front, number of phenomenal initiatives we are, we have already taken, we are in the process of implementation and we are stipulating all three of them. That is the reason why internationally, our India is one of the few countries that is taking its electric mobility plan in an absolutely structured way. So that is the first phenomenal thing. And second is the pace with, with which we are moving, that itself is phenomenal. As far as visibility is concerned, it will take some time, you see. But still, the numbers speak that it is going in a, in a very big way. In addition to the to adopting this global mobility, the aspiration is that India must be the global manufacturing hub as far as electric vehicles, battery, battery and storage systems and the electric vehicle components are concerned. We should be a kind of global hub and that is how precisely it is being taken forward. So, according to you, what could the barriers be to this widespread adoption of electric vehicles in India? And what measures do we need to take to increase the penetration of EVs? Awareness is the first one. So, more and more awareness initiative is required that we are working ahead with. That is one thing. The second is, as I said, that one barrier is that of uh, finance is still a barrier. You know. And as far as the adoption is concerned, one of the barriers is that of the charging infrastructure. How to precisely proliferate this charging infrastructure so that the issue of range anxiety no longer exists in the mind of the user, that is again one of the pieces. So I would say that uh, charging infrastructure, finance and awareness, these are the, some of the barriers. I would call them that, that we are addressing too. Yes. Okay, Mr. Sinha, it was a pleasure speaking with you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us on this special edition. And on that note, it's time to go into a break. When we return, we discuss how the private sector is playing a vital role to drive sustainable mobility. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to India Energy Bulletin and for India to meet its clean energy transition goals, the electric utility sector has a critical responsibility. And Tata Power, India's largest integrated power company, is playing a leading role in India's energy transition journey and paving the way for a shift to electric mobility. Tata Power powering green mobility through Pan India EV charging infra setup and it is a network of 2400 plus public and SEBI public EV chargers with another 1400 plus chargers in various stages of installation. Now install 21,000 plus home chargers and 240 plus bus charging points across India. Tata Power has collaborated with multiple partners across industries to enable the transition to clean mobility. They have set up multiple charging stations for fleet operators as well as tie-ups with leading auto OEMs like Tata Motors, JLR, Land Rover, Hyundai, MG Motors, Volvo and TVs. Tata Power has also collaborated with leading real estate developers to provide EV charging solutions across all residential and commercial projects undertaken by them. Tata Power and AMA Stays and Trails by Indian Hotels Company Limited collaborated to contribute towards a greener tourism future by setting up EV charging stations across multiple AMA properties. Tata Power partnered with Apollo Tires to deploy EV charging stations at its commercial and passenger vehicle zones across India. They signed MOU with Nardeco, which is the National Real Estate Development Council, to install 5,000 EV charging points across Maharashtra. The company has kicked off an ambitious nationwide plan of setting up EV charging stations from north to south, connecting Kashmir to Kanyakumari, and from east to west, from Guwahati to Dwarka and Bikaner over the next three to five years. Tata Power Easy Charge is a mobile application that helps users locate EV charging stations, charge EVs, and make bill payments online. It has invested in a state-of-the-art Tata Power Easy Charge digital platform wherein the entire charging network is connected and can be monitored centrally. The platform enables interaction between the charger, the car and the customer through a mobile phone. The Easy Charge app is packed with all the basic features of locating, navigating, charging and paying apart from advanced features like specific rate plans and route planning among others. And additionally, there are specific functionalities related to corporate admins, hotels, malls and commercial spaces, fleet managers and residential societies. The company will be skilling 3,000 youth to work in renewable energy sector and Tata Power Skill Development Institute, TPSDI, has so far trained 1.4 lakh people across its courses, both conventional and renewable energy technology. It is expanding its training initiatives to equip youth with skills for green energy jobs. So there's no doubt that the future of mobility is electric. To discuss this, we have with us Mr. Nilesh Kani, Chief Distribution of Mumbai Operations Tata Power Mumbai, to talk about building a robust charging infrastructure in India to fuel this change. Welcome to the show, Mr. Kani, and thanks a lot for speaking with us. You know, the progress of the mobility world toward electric vehicles entails a fundamental shift in the concept of the automotive industry and consumer behavior as well. How is mobility being reimagined through this transition from ICE vehicles to electric vehicles? Uh, there is a big shift from uh, you know, ICE uh, vehicles to electric vehicles. And the major driver uh, for this shift is you know, uh, the passion towards the sustainability by the consumer and the clean or the emission-free uh, vehicles. The automobile companies and the companies like Tata Power are working you know, the day and night to uh, you know, the convince the customer that the initial cost of electric vehicle is high, but you know, the per kilometer cost of electric vehicle is comparatively very, very low. Vis-a-vis -vis 10 rupees to 15 rupees for petrol and diesel, they are spending only 1 rupees to 3 rupees on the electric vehicle. The convenience uh, uh, being expected by the customer by developing the electric vehicle charging infrastructure is also uh, being given to the customer over a period of time. Thousands of electric vehicle chargers has been installed and the customer is now confident enough to go for the electric vehicle. And uh, the comfort what the customer is getting from the electric vehicle vis-a-vis -vis the ICE is also phenomenal. And uh, this journey uh, from shifting from ICE to electric vehicle is little slow, but now it is picking up and it will be a great journey towards the sustainability. You know, the EV industry has seen significant and comprehensive growth due to stricter emission norms, reduced battery prices and increasing consumer awareness as well. What are the opportunities and challenges for an Indian EV manufacturer and also the entire ecosystem? 
So far as the EV journey uh, of India is concerned, we have travelled a long way and we have to travel a long way too. Uh, so far as the electric vehicle uh, journey is concerned, there are a uh, few challenges and Tata Power would like to convert that challenges into the opportunities. And obviously, a lot of opportunities are there in this area. Uh, so far as challenges is concerned, uh, you know, I would say the initial cost uh, of the vehicle is the major challenge and on which a lot of research and development uh, and the cost optimizations are being done by the battery companies. Uh, the second uh, challenge I could say that the range anxiety, uh, availability of you know the electric vehicle infrastructure, the customers are comfortable to operate electric cars within the city, but to uh, go on a long drive they are very apprehensive about the availability of the charging infrastructure. So on that you know the company uh, like our startup hour is working, we are prioritize uh, the major highways of India and on which we are giving the best of the infrastructure to every 100, 150 kilometers such that customers are comfortable to operate the electric vehicles. The third challenge our dependency on lithium ion technology on which also a lot of work is going on at the academic level as well as at the industry level such that cost effective batteries can be developed and to be used in the electric vehicles to optimize the cost. So far as you know the uh, opportunities is concerned, uh, the public charging station, public charging infrastructure, uh, electric vehicle fleet management uh, by the major corporates, you know, converting the vehicles into electric vehicles, leasing electric vehicles for the commercial purposes, then the battery swapping, you know, to give the comfort to the customer, battery second life use, you know, even after using the battery in the electric vehicle, these batteries can be used for the power system to support uh, the reliability of the power system and electric vehicle is the area for giving the awareness and the knowledge to the, uh, the stakeholders. The EV training is also area. So, these are few areas on which Tata Power is also working and there is a huge scope to work on that. You know, according to a white paper by Alviraz and Marcel India, a country now requires setting up of 46,000 EV charging stations by 2030. This is to reach the global benchmark. What does the roadmap look like going ahead? What measures need to be taken to grow this ecosystem? Uh, so far as this white paper is concerned and the benchmark what they have suggested, we are progressing very well. Uh, obviously, we are not benchmark uh, if we compare with the country like China, uh, you know, country like USA. In a China, there is an electric charging station for every six vehicles. Uh, in USA, there is a charging station for uh, every odd 20 odd uh, electric vehicles. And in India, we have a charging station for every 125, 130 uh, electric vehicles. So, we have to go a long way. Uh, but uh, we are working very aggressively so far as Tata Power is concerned. We have 2500 charging stations across the 300 cities in India and uh, we have prioritized the charging uh, station infrastructure, how we can enhance that. Uh, uh, we are going aggressively, we have a target up around 10,000 charging station uh, by next year and uh, the key locations what we have prioritized that the major highways. Uh, connecting major cities in India, major malls, major uh, the pump stations, pumping stations on the highways and uh, the major cities and the convenient locations where you know the customer really need the charging facility. So, there we are focusing on that. Uh, the important part of enhancing the electric vehicle charging infrastructure is connectivity to the electricity network and uh, the state government and central government are supporting. Uh, to push electric vehicle uh, charging infrastructure enhancement, but still a few regulations and few uh, support and few guidelines are also required to quickly enhance this capacity to meet uh, uh, the benchmark and to give the best of the convenience to the customers. You know, Tata Power is one of India's largest EV charging solution providers with over 2,350 public EV chargers in nearly 300 cities. How is Tata Power getting Indian cities electric vehicles ready? What are your long-term plans here? So far as startup hour is concerned, uh, we have started very early uh, uh, in the electric vehicle infrastructure development area. Uh, we have a good market share, more than 50 percent electric vehicle charging stations are provided by the Tata Power. We have a very good presence. We have 2,500 chargers uh, across the 300 cities are already available and giving the best of the services to the customer. We have a very aggressive plan of reaching around 10,000 chargers by next year and to take forward that uh, plan of 10,000 chargers, we have strategically tied up with oil companies, with hotel chains, with the developers and builders as well to give the best of 
seamless connectivity to our charging infrastructure. We have tied up with uh, vehicle uh, original equipment manufacturers also and we are going very positively in a long term to be a market leader in this area. A lot on that, company has also invested in a state-of-the-art Tata Power Easy Charge digital platform wherein the entire charging network is connected and can be monitored centrally. Could you explain us the features of this app? Tata Power uh, Easy Charge is the app Tata Power has developed. It is a customer-friendly app and we are really proud of it. Customer has highly appreciated that. So far as the Tata Power Easy Charge app is concerned, this app is enabling customer to locate to pre-book the slot of charging, they can start the session through this app, they can do the payment uh, through this app. So uh, absolutely it is in customer, best of the customer experience uh, on this app is concerned. This app also supports fleet management, it will give a complete data of your historical charging sessions, historical payments, so all the information is being given to the customer and uh, so far as the monitoring of the all uh, uh, EV charging uh, stations is concerned. We have a network operation center where all the charging infrastructure is being monitored real time and that real time information is also passed on to the customer through this app. Okay, interesting inputs out there. Thank you so much Mr. Kane for those valuable insights and thank you for joining us on the first edition of India Energy Bulletin. Every month India Energy Bulletin will bring to you all the latest developments in the sustainable energy sector and make sustainable solutions attainable by all. Stay tuned.